Hello everyone, this is episode 13 of our one bedroom house and uh, today what we're going to do is to add some columns to our building, alright? But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to all my visionaries who have been supporting the, the channel so far, um, you know, big up on yourself, respect. And if it's your first time on the channel, thank you for joining. If you like what you see here or if you learn something, you know what, hit the like button and also don't forget to subscribe and comment and everything. Also follow me on my other social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter. Those are the only two I have right now. And uh, yeah, let's jump on the other side. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so you know how it goes over here, classroom style. The first question the teacher is gonna ask you is what is a column? Anybody here know what is a column? Raise your hand for me. You know what, let's turn to Google. I ask Google, what is a column? An upright pillar, typically cylindrical and made of stone or concrete, supporting an entablature, arch, or other structure or standing alone as a monument. What Google is basically telling us is that a column is not only here for pretty looks, if you know what I'm gonna say. Columns are often load bearing, which simply mean that they are holding up something, whether it be the roof, a beam, an arch, something, most times. Or sometimes them have it by itself standing up in the middle of nowhere, just for pretty looks. So columns also come in various shape, size, and are made from a concrete, stone, steel, and even wood. Most of the columns that are made from wood, we typically call those a post, but they, their function is similar to a column because they are holding up something as well. So we just put them in another class there and we'll say, yeah, what? Hold on a column, so I wanna stay right this way. See me as that? All right. Okay, so before we get into the specific columns that we're gonna use on this building, it is important to note that the shape, size, and uh, the material that is used to make these columns are usually determined by an engineer. All right, someone who understand how load works, um, how to do calculations and make sure that you're using the right steel, the right mix of concrete, you know, to, to determine if the size of the column is big enough or wide enough to hold up a certain amount of load or weight. So these can be very uh, tricky if you don't understand what you're doing. But for this building and most buildings that we do in Jamaica, um, we have a standard column type that we use, which I'm going to get into in a moment and this is just a typical example all right so if you're going to do a much larger building and so on then you would need to do some more research and find out exactly the type of column and beam also that would be needed for your particular project all right so of course the columns that we're using will be made from concrete they will be reinforced with steel or rebar and so they look like these these are special shaped columns um, that we in Jamaica call stiffeners right so as you can see we have various shapes and of course they are not limited to these only it depends on how uh, the walls connect all right so of course in our drawing we will only need to use these three top ones that you're seeing here so the standard t stiffener we have the i stiffener and we also have the l stiffener and by just looking at it you can basically determine where on the building you would place these based on the shape of the column so of course the t would go somewhere where the wall meets another wall like that at a junction and then the eye would go on a straight wall so if you have a wall that is very long or if you have a wall that stops in the middle of a room or something you want to use the eye stiffener and also if you have the corner of the building we want to use the L stiffener and in other cases we would use a cross shape stiffener or a Y shape or a 45 degree angle stiffener. All right, so you can go ahead and download this PDF in the description below, cause you're gonna need it. All right, as you can see, we have the dimensions on here for this particular project. And as you can see, each leg of the stiffener has uh, the width of the wall. So this one is six inches, this one is also six, and this one over here would be the same as well likewise we have one that is six by 12 and we also have another one so if your wall is going to be 
8 inches, you're gonna make sure that uh, the thickness of your stiffener is also 8 inches. All right, so that is that. Let's move over into AutoCAD and make we get the thing rolling. So the first thing you wanna do, if you notice here, I kinda go ahead with things so that I can move a little faster. So go ahead and create a construct and call it structural because really and truly columns and beams would be placed in this drawing. We're not gonna model the beams here. We could do everything here in 3D, but we're gonna do them in 2D just to make things easier. And also really and truly, we don't need 3D for this drawing, especially due to the fact that these columns are basically hidden within the walls. You won't be seeing them popping out of the wall. So we don't necessarily need to put them in 3D. All right, even for this one in the corner here, we already have a column looking thing there. If I should put the drawing in 3D, you can see that we have something that looks like a column already. So we don't need to model anything at all here in 3D. So go ahead, create a construct and we're gonna call it structural. As you can see, I have it open up already. And then you're gonna minimize that. No, before you minimize, go ahead and XREF overlay the ground floor into your structural model arm structural drawing so that's what i have done here so far and then you're going to go ahead and draw the shape of your stiffeners so if you notice i have one that i didn't do which is the t-shape one so i'm going to show you how to go about doing that but i already have uh three already made and these are actually smart as you can see they have a pull point and they also have a rotation uh, ability. So the one that I'm going to create, I'm going to show you how I go about doing that. So let's go ahead and you would want to look on the PDF to make sure that you're following uh, the dimension and the sizing accurately. All right. So we're going to turn on our author mode and we're going to go ahead and just draw uh, the, the T stiffener. So six, six, six. It's all six all the way. Almost like the mark of the beast. Circle and C's. Trample the beast. All right. So there we go. So this is our, our thing. And then we're gonna just type the command to join. We're gonna join everything together, hit enter. And we're gonna then hatch using the concrete uh, hatch, which is this. Make sure that it is saying one, do that, hit enter. So now we have a hatching and we also have the shape of the thing. All right, at this point, we're gonna turn all of this into a block. So we're gonna type the command. Well, let's select everything first and then type the command block. So what we're doing here is to, as you can see that little display there is to turn this object into a block. Now, if you look down here, you can see that I have those three made and they are named inside of here. So we're gonna name this one the standard T stiffener. And we're gonna hit okay. Now we're gonna say open in block editor because we want to make it smart. So we're gonna say okay. All right, so now that we're in the editor, this is where we can make it into something that we can rotate and, and those kind of things. So the first thing we're gonna do is to go up to parameter and we're gonna add a point. All right, we're gonna add two points. We wanna be able to grab the object from this corner and this corner. So let's do that, grab. I'm going to put one point here. I'm going to put another point here. Let's drag these out. These are just labels to identify where your stuff is. As you can see, the blue marker here is where the actual thing is at. And we also want to be able to rotate this block. So we're going to click on rotate. We we'll want to rotate it from these two points as well. So we're going to place the first one right here. We're going to drag this out like so and type eight and the angle that we want would be 180 degrees. And then we're going to also type eight once more. So as you can see, we have our rotation handle right there. We want to place another one over here. So we're going to click on rotation again, and we're going to click in this corner, drag this out and type eight. And our angle would be zero enter. And just like that, we now have our two rotational uh, handles. So now, guess what? 
we need to make them into actions because even though we place the parameters they are not active so what we're going to do is to do the the move handles first so let's click on move it says here select the parameter so we want to do this one first so we're going to select that and then it is now asking you what do you want to rotate we want to rotate everything hit enter actually it's not rotate it's move let's do this the second one select the parameter what do you want to move everything enter we're going to do the same thing for rotate so click on rotate we're going to do this rotation parameter first so we click on the parameter now we need to select everything that we want to rotate which would be everything hold on let me let me let me zoom out everything enter i'm going to do the next one rotate i'm going to select this one what do you want to rotate everything enter and that's it we hit close we hit save and just like that we have a, a block that can be moved around with these handles let me turn this off so we can move it around and we can also rotate it using any of these handles all right so just like that you want to make sure that you save because that's a lot of work and also go ahead and create a layer for these columns so i've already created one here called s calls and i made it green and also at a line weight of 0.5 mm so go ahead and create that layer and what we're going to do is to place all of these on that layer so everything looks the way it ought to be. all right so usually what I would do now is to start copying these over. So we're going to hit the copy tool. Um, I usually do this one first because this one kind of fit in all of the corners of the house. All right, so I'm going to place that one there. I'm going to place one here. I'm going to place one here. And I'm going to place one here. And then I'm going to place one here. And of course, you're going to go ahead and rotate them now into the orientation if you notice this is not good so we need to turn on author so that we can make them uh, perfectly straight you don't want to rotate it and it should be what 90 90 degree rotation and when you check it 89.7 and that kind of thing that's that's missed that's that that wouldn't be good all right you want your thing to be as accurate as possible so go ahead and click on those rotation handle and just rotate your thing so far we have all four or five corners taken care of um, we're gonna add a t maybe right there and another t over here so let's go ahead and do that and you could actually rotate it from here before you copy it so that that, that so that way you can just you know move it over let me turn this off for now and we're gonna drop that one right there i'm gonna need this one right here as well turn my author mode on before I rotate okay obviously that was placed in the wrong spot so let's just drag it up like so all right so we have two T stiffeners I don't think we need any more than that I'm gonna be placing a couple of uh, um, I stiffeners so this one I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna drop this one right here and so I can rotate this one like so right in that spot so I would have a beam running over this into that and then I would have a beam running from this into that beam over here I feel like I needed to have another T stiffener right here I don't think you need it but I'm just gonna put it there all right so we have this beam running into that and then this beam running to uh, this wall down here so what i would do is to put another l right there i'll put an l right here and rotate this all right one other thing you don't want to have too many columns on the building because you'll make the building too rigid and that's not good you want the building to have a, some amount of wiggle uh, to it so that it can hold up to the earthquakes and all of that 
all right so too many columns can actually be a problem like if you have like tiny closets and those things you don't need to be putting columns in all of those areas i think we have enough columns here and then we might need one extra one the square one now to be placed right there so i'm gonna copy this i'm gonna drop it actually i think i copied it from the wrong spot let me move it from this corner to that corner so now we have all of our columns in place you can go ahead and delete these i don't want to see them if i go to 3d you can see them on the floor and remember that these are in 2d so and so that is how you go about getting in your columns guys now we're going to hit the save button all right one of the other things that we could actually do is go to our views and now we need to add these columns to our floor plan and our foundation plan as well so we go ahead and we right click and we say properties and we'll go down to content and we make sure that structural is is selected and we say okay and we're going to do the same thing for foundation i'm going to go to properties content okay it's not in our foundation and i think i know why hmm the construct is on the ground floor. So I'm gonna go properties here and I'm gonna also select foundation. Okay, good. So that way when we go to views and we go to foundation and we say properties and we go to that, then we have structural as well. So that way now when we open up these views, we now see that they're located inside if I should open up my foundation, let me keep this up, open up foundation. We also see them inside of here. And this is very important because these columns will be constructed from the foundation up. And so we need to be able to see them from this uh, view as well all right guys so that is where we're gonna wrap this up today um thank you for watching thank you for tuning in i hope that you learned something and of course you're not gonna forget i'm gonna remind you to hit the like button hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell and don't forget to comment and share and everything else follow me on instagram follow me on twitter that's it all right so see you in the next video if you have any questions you know what to do already and uh yeah yeah let's let's let, let, let's get the ball rolling man <laughs>